Now let's focus our attention on alkenes. We're looking at the carbon-carbon double bond stretch. And that's going to show up in this region right here. And so what, when we look at our molecule here, we have our carbon-carbon double bonds right there. And those signals, or those car, uh, carbons that are circled, are right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, am I, I'm not going to be too picky. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, if we numbered these carbons, which, which peak represents which one? No, I'm not that specific on it. You just say, hey, there's signal here. Hey, that, that is in the set, the correct region that we would expect carbon-carbon stretches. To be more specific, carbon-carbon double bond stretches. But we could analyze this further, and this is a good example of what to do. I would also always, always take a vertical line and go down 3,000. And what do I see? I see signal here on the right side and I see signal on the left side. What are those? Well, this side right here is sp3 carbon hydrogen stretches, which can be seen right there. There's a lot of sp3 hybridized carbon hydrogen bonds right there. And then what's this right here? That is going to be sp2 carbon hydrogen stretches. And we can see all those sp2 carbon hydrogen stretches on the benzene ring. Isn't that cool? So every time I look at an IR spectrum, I'm going directly to the 1700 to see if there's a carbonyl stretch. And then I'm always, always going to draw that line down 3000. And that will help me out. And then you just look for obvious uh, signals. Like if we see a big broad signal around here, we, we would probably have an alcohol or carboxylic acid and so forth. So you can do the same analysis for this one in the bottom here. You can see everything's annotated and we would draw our line down here, 3000. So that signal are all those SP3s carbon hydrogen stretches and then the signal right there are these hydrogens right there carbon hydrogen stretches so we have an alkyne let's draw a generic alkyne right here that's a generic one and then we have what's called a nitrile right here Nitriles has a general structure like that. So now what we're going to do is focus our attention on this carbon-carbon triple bond stretch and this carbon-nitrogen bond triple stretch. Now these stretches are so easy to identify on an IR spectrum. And the reason why they're so easy to identify is because no other stretches appear in this range. So if you see signal in that range, that's a very sharp peak, then you know with high confidence that you have an alkyne or a nitrile. Okay. Now we see here that uh, nitriles, here's our nitrile, it's typically has a larger wave number than a nitrile. Okay, but there's a lot of overlap, so you can't really use that all the time. Okay, so just got to be careful with that. Okay, they're very similar. But if you do see a signal, boom, boom. You have a good probability, you have a very high probability of an alkyne or a alkene, alkyne or a nitrile. Okay. Now, 
there are some differences between an alkyne and a nitrile, and that's kind of demonstrated in this little blurb right there, where an alkyne stretch is typically weak and a nitrile stretch is typically intense. So based off of that definition or that explanation, if we looked at spectrum three, and spectrum four, which one would you predict would be the nitrile? Well, the nitriles are the ones that are more intense. So that one right there would be our nitrile. And the one on the right would be our alkyne. Now, why is this the case? Okay. It all goes back to a symmetry argument and quantum mechanics. And remember in previous videos how I just simplified it down. If the molecule has more symmetry, like a nitrile, the intensity of the peak isn't going to be as great. But when you look at a nitrile, do you see how there's not really good symmetry? This bond right here is polarized and more polar a molecule is, more intense the signal is going to be. That is why you see this really intense peak right there for the nitrile because of that polarization. Now, we have talked about this a lot already where we've looked at this guy. That is a carbon-hydrogen stretch. That is a sp3 carbon hydrogen stretch so on an alkane so we could draw an alkane and those hydrogens right there are responsible for stretches in that region we've discussed that intent already we have our alkyne up here which would simply look like this so it's that stretch right there and that would be our sp and then we have our alkene, which would look like this. Right, there's our carbon-hydrogen stretch, and that would be our sp2. Now we have, so I, I talked about these three. Now we have this one, aromatic, and aldehyde stretches. Now an aromatic compound. At this point in the game, all you have to understand is an aromatic compound is a cyclic molecule which is conjugated. So double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. You see how it's rotating? In the previous videos I talked about conjugation. So when we talk about aromatic, we are looking at a conjugated molecule that is cyclic. And we are going to delve into the specifics of that in future chapters. But that's what you need to know at this point, okay? So if you have an aromatic hydrogen, right there we're talking about, or sorry, an aromatic carbon hydrogen stretch, we're talking about that, okay? And you could lump the aromatic carbon stretches with alkenes. They're kind of the, they're exactly, not exactly, but very, very similar because that is a sp2 hybridized carbon. That is an alkene, but aromaticity or aromatic compounds behave slightly differently than just normal alkenes. But we will delve into that more in the future lectures, okay? But I want you just to be aware of what that's talking about. Now we have an aldehyde. Remember, an aldehyde looks like this. Okay. And an aldehyde has some very unique uh, peaks here, is that this hydrogen right here. So what we're looking at is that carbon. So I'm just drawing an aldehyde now, drawing that carbon. We are worried about that carbon-hydrogen stretch. And aldehydes give us two peaks at these wave numbers, okay, 
roughly in those wave numbers, and their intensities are moderate. They're not very intense. So I found this uh, IR spectrum off of the internet showing us butyraldehyde right there. And what, analyzing that real quick, look out how cool this is. There's our carbonyl, there's our carbonyl. But I'm, the purpose of this slide is to show you that stretch right there. And I said it does it in two. And there they are. One, two. And so though, when you see those two peaks at those wave numbers, and you see how they are not very intense, they're more moderate, that is indicative of a aldehyde. And then I have all these additional examples that we are not going to discuss in this video, but we will discuss in class.